I'm Al McFarland. Welcome to Conversations with Al McFarland. And you know, it's all about the neighborhood. This is a conversation about how we build our community, our neighborhood, house by house, family by family. We're focusing on business creation, business development, economic development, and culture. Check out our new website at insightnews.com. I'm Al McFarland. Welcome to Conversations with Al McFarland. Thanks to my brother Wayne. Wayne, it's always a pleasure to hear you and to work with you. Glad I'm back in town to do these shows with you. Well, I'm so glad you're here as well. Now, today, as promised, is a robust conversation. We do this because we think it's important to tackle critical issues in our community. And I have said that health, our health and well-being, our fitness is a critical issue. And it's not just a critical issue, it's one that actually can provide pathways to enlightenment, to improvement, to higher quality of life for all of our citizens. Well, I'm pleased to have this program focus on that. And with me now, uh, two leaders, elders and friends. Carrie Davis is the branch director of the YMCA at the Cora McCorvey Center in North Minneapolis. Before being at the center, she served as the chief administrator officer with the Santa Foundation. And you know why I'm so pleased that we are talking, Cara, uh, uh, Cora Carey, is that uh, we at the Insight to Health Fitness Challenge have been uh, launching and conducting our uh, current first time North Minneapolis Fitness Challenge in the Cora McCorvey Center. Thank you for allowing that and thank you for being here. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. Well, let me introduce also uh, Dr. Nicole Winbush. She's a family medicine specialist in Minneapolis. Uh, she's been practicing medicine for 15 years, and she also works at North Point Health and Wellness Center in North Minneapolis. She graduated from the University of medicine, Maryland School of Medicine in 2000. Again, her specialty is family medicine. Uh, Dr. Wimbush, you also write a column at Insight News. I thank you for that. Let me start with you to ask you why it's important to communicate, to use community news media to both educate uh, our community and just to get people aware. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me here and uh, having a chance to share the work we're doing at North Point. Um, yeah, I, I write a column episodically. I, I can't. I don't do it every week. Um, but I, I found, and I think I started doing it maybe four or five years ago mm -hmm. at this point. But that there's so many of the conversations that we have um, when we're seeing patients, you know, one on one, um, around a lot of the things I write about, whether it be diet, nutrition, the importance of activity, um, and and those conversations are really important. Um, but in the context of a 10, 15, or 20 minute office visit, a lot of times you can't go into the detail mm -hmm. to really give people the story and the information that can then help them decide how to implement that in their life. So to be able to write a column in a paper, hopefully reach more people than are coming in to see me in clinic, mm -hmm. um, 
felt really important and it's also something that I use as a tool because when I would see patients I'd say oh you know well we talked a little bit about this but you know either you know go to Insight or look this up or sometimes mm -hmm. I compile them in a separate website just mm -hmm. to be a resource and I've been pleased and um, surprised at how it does reach people. Mm -hmm. I think maybe this winter I was walking into the library over in South at the Hosmer Library, and, and I, I don't even think I'm that recognizable from my picture. And somebody said, you write those columns for Insight. <laughs> <laughs> and it had, I, 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 at that point, I hadn't written a column in several months, mm -hmm. but peop and people often ask me, when are you gonna write more columns? Mm -hmm. So it's, um, you know, not from That's an ego feedback. standpoint, That's but- That's wonderful feedback, though. You, you, know, some, you know, yeah, sometimes when I think, you know, is it worth doing this, or is the message getting out there? Because yeah. that's really what it's about, but yeah. it's been yeah. pleasing. And I think at North Point in general, we're continually trying to find, you know, what is the best way to, to reach our patients and our clients, you know, aside from hopefully help, hoping that they can come to North Point and access services North as well. Point is what I call a legacy institution. Mm -hmm. It's a major uh, health resource for North Minneapolis and beyond. And uh, it's been there, it was created back in the anti-poverty days as part of the Great Society. And it's uniquely uh, a county facility on the one hand, but controlled and managed by a neighborhood board of directors. Right. So it's a wonderful way to empower, enable residents of the community to direct the care they receive to establish priorities and to expect top quality service. What North Point has done has delivered on the promise. Hmm. Talk about that. Wow. Um, well, yeah, I'm not a native Minnesotan, but I've been here now for, I don't know, um, 12, 12 years or so, and certainly working at North Point for, for most of those. Um, it is really incredible, the history that we have in our community. Um, and I think we're going into our 50th year mm -hmm. this year, our 50th anniversary of providing services, uh, community health services in our community. And, you know, I think it is powerful. We really do aim to be this one-stop shop to um, from the guidance of our community board, which is majority made up of our patients, as mm -hmm. you said. I mean, we are kind of under county affiliation, but our board, who are patients at our clinic, really determine kind of what happens, um, you know, to be guided by those principles. And so our mission is really to partner to create a healthier community. And I think we really see, which is probably where this conversation will go, um, health as being certainly more than just treating sickness mm -hmm. or the absence of disease. It really is, you know, we are the North Point Health and Wellness Center, formerly Pilot City, but mm -hmm. I think this idea that we really need to have a very broad conception of what um, contributes to the well-being of individuals, which we know is really the well-being of the community. Mm -hmm. And so whether it be the direct health services we provide around treating disease or prevention, um, the human services around trying to help people through different means with education, economic empowerment, stable housing. Um, I think we're always trying to enlarge that vision of how we support our community. So what is the nature of the demand? How much, how great is the need? Oh, uh, well, part of, I mean, a testament to that is the fact that I think we'll, most people who go drive down the corner of Penn and Plymouth will see that we're in the midst of starting a very large expansion um, because for um, many years we have been at an over capacity. We certainly have more patients call or more people seeking care each month to be a new patient at North Point than we're even able to currently meet the demand for. So there is definitely a demand for services. And as a community health center, we see people regardless of their ability to pay. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important thing. So, you know, in Minnesota, we are blessed with having a fairly robust, you know, safety net and a lot of folks that can qualify for insurance, but there's a lot of people who can't. Um, recent immigrants to our community, et cetera. So we have a sliding scale fee and we have lots of people who need health services mm -hmm. and um, hopefully with our expansion, we'll be able to fully meet that demand. My sense uh, as an observer and a resident of the neighborhood is <clears throat> that you also um, have um, a uh, huge reservoir of credibility and um, what's the right word for it? Um, uh, success in serving all the people in the community. So it's not a question of, um, of only people who can't afford, but people who know that there is great value and excellent doctors such as yourself, who uh, they want to be uh, their advocates and their uh, directors of their personal health. So I think you've got a great reputation there. Mm -hmm. What's your experience with that? Yeah, I mean, I, we have many, um patients and clients who have been coming to North Point for, for years. 
um, even when they move out of our community. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little nervous. But you, so, so you said, what's, our, what's the experience so, around? You know, talk about the fact that the, the organization serves the entire community. Right. And um, one might say it, it is just for people that can't afford. No. And by, that's the point I wanted right, to make. So by yeah, no means. Yeah. I mean, we, are, we, we strive to be, and I think we are sort of the, the chosen health care provider for, right. for many people. Right. Um, we certainly want to be there for folks who, mm. um, as I said, you know, don't have insurance and don't have the ability to pay, but we, we really strive to provide excellence and service across the board and to be responsive. I mean, there are very few places that you can go mm -hmm. where, you know, you can, you know, have a, a pharmacy on site, an eye doctor, a full service dental clinic, a full service medical clinic, um, a host of other um, services. So I think from the convenience standpoint, mm -hmm. from the quality of care, we are um, the first community health center in, in Minnesota to be um, certified as a health care home mm -hmm. um, and to um, regularly meeting and exceeding a lot of the quality measures that are um, set forth um, for community health centers. And, and you have more facilities. You have uh, West yes. Broadway. <laughs> and you're moving more places, so you're right. bringing it to talk about to, that. Yeah, yeah. trying to, to, to meet people, you know, as close to as we can and to be convenient. So we have a site uh, at the Cora McCorvey uh, Wellness Center, which is a site where I actually see patients um, and do um, holistic and integrative mm -hmm. care consults. Um, we have a facility uh, on Broadway. We are in student health clinics at North High. Mm -hmm. um, we also have our behavioral health services embedded in several schools. So it really is a model of trying to um, not have people have to travel really far to mm -hmm. come to this one site, but to also be kind of um, conveniently located for folks, yeah. Carrie, it's wonderful that uh, you all are co-located mm -hmm. at the Cora McCorvey Center, uh, and your YMCA is a brand new facility, as is the North Point Clinic at Cora McCorvey Center. That's correct. You got a special mission. We do. Talk about that. You know, we're different from other Ys mm -hmm. in that our population we serve is 50 and older. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're looking at now is bringing in 40 and older. But we focus on the mature adult and we talk about the benefits of health and wellness and nutrition. And we utilize exercise, group X classes, as well as individual training to show older adults how to do this really um, specialized for their needs, um, where a Zumba class that I might have taken 10 years ago is hard pounding, fast moving. We adapt for the older, mature user. Um, we think about our strength class, and it's really about building on the individual strength rather than throwing up you know, barbells. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really a community. One of the things that I learned in coming in as the branch director is that the members there, this is their home. This is where they come and they meet their friends. This is where they come and they get that spiritual um, connection with each other as well as understanding the importance of exercise. And so I feel like the, the home has been open for me to come in and be a part of this revolution and talk about what is important and why they need to be eating well and thinking about movement and not staying stag stagnant. When I, um, on a daily basis, will have members come into my office, even if I'm in a meeting or not, they'll come in and they'll sit in their wheelchairs and turn it around and tell whoever I'm talking to, excuse me, but I need to ask her a question. So it's the type of place where this is theirs and I'm just blessed enough to be a part of it. So I raised the question in uh, bringing the Insight to Health Fitness Challenge to North Minneapolis uh, that too often our community is defined by deficits. Uh, we all know that North Minneapolis, they say, is ground zero for all of the health disparities that our state has experienced. So I raised the question, uh, Dr. Winbush, about this notion of a blue zone. And my understanding is that uh, researchers have identified uh, a number of communities around the planet where people live long, they have high quality lives, and the question is, how come North Minneapolis, what would it take for North Minneapolis to be a blue zone? So I pose the question to, to Kari and others, what if we start this conversation about our neighborhood being a, a blue zone mm -hmm. by the year 2040? Mm -hmm. It's a thought, what do you think? I 
think that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think you've got it exactly right. That's the work of, um, I think it's Dan Buettner, who's mm -hmm. I think a, a native mm -hmm. Minnesotan. And he tra they traveled, and I think initially he was funded by National Geographic to travel all around the world to find where do people live the longest mm -hmm. in these communities where people were living to be more than 100. And I, I wish I had paid closer attention. I was just reading an article last night, but talking about what are the, the elements to that. And I won't probably remember them all, but one thing that I think you were just touching on is this importance of the power of community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the power of a sense of belonging mm -hmm. and looking at some of these other communities and how culturally that presents itself. So I think, uh, I think in Okinawa, which is close mm -hmm. to Japan, there's mm -hmm. a, a whole cultural tradition of, of these women who, um, you know, so much in our culture often can be around couples and romantic couples, but there, they're, you know, when women are a young age, and mm -hmm. maybe the men do it too, but mm -hmm. they, they get tied together in these communities mm -hmm. of, of co, um, what do I want to say, uh, co-responsibility mm -hmm. and co-caring, mm -hmm. um, and they're really with this cohort of women, they're committed for life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one example, but I think how do we in North Minneapolis really make sure that everyone has a sense of, of a belongingness, you know, whether they're have been here for generations or a recent transplant to the community. Walkable communities, that was another thing. You know, that it's, it's nice to have a gym and to be able to go do purposeful exercise, but also part of the thing that um, helps us to live longer is to really to be able to have activity that's a part of our daily life and that a lot of that's about walkable communities, which I know there's talk about in the larger Minneapolis uh, as a, a city and obviously broadly, but how do we specifically kind of adapt that to North Minneapolis? And then obviously the food, mm -hmm. and um, which is near and dear to my heart. Um, and we all have to eat. And so there's a lot, you know, and it can be very confusing for people, you know, what's the right diet and not that there's one right diet for folks, but really having a, uh, I guess what I recently heard it called a plant forward mm -hmm. approach to eating, right? Mm -hmm. How do we really um, make sure that people are eating a diet that is rich mm -hmm. in, in fresh vegetables and fruits and plant-based foods and maybe some meat as well. So I, there, w there were some other elements, but um, yeah, and so how do we make that a reality in North Minneapolis? And I think people are doing that work. I think they are. Uh, so yeah. many people are yeah. doing that work and it, you really start to see people who have doing, been doing this work for years yes. Yes. starting to get traction and it's so exciting yeah. through all of the food justice work, through Appetite for Change, through mm -hmm organizations like Cora yeah. McCorvey Wellness Center. You know, and Al, when you brought it up to me, one of the things that I was so excited about is that I've been able to talk to Dan Buettner about his work mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And thinking about the opportunities we have at the YMCA and working with our residents, a lot of the nutrition pieces are around cultural experiences. Mm -hmm. So how do we take that and not disregard that, but show them how to do it differently with their input. Because what I've learned about our forever well population, you can't tell them what to do, they have to be part of the process. And that community that you talk about is, we don't have a gym, but we are connected with a senior facility. And so there's a way that they can walk around the building right. without even going outside, right. and they do yeah. it in groups. Yeah. And so it makes them want to come there. So when we think about the traditional plan of working out and getting your exercise in, for them, it's about coming together and even walking 2,000 steps in a morning and then sitting down and talking and then getting up again. All of that is about building a healthy human being. I want to thank both of you. We're going to talk to the participants, the leaders of the Insight to Health Fitness Challenge in a minute. But Dr. Nicole Wimbush, thank you for your service, your leadership. Kari Davis, branch director at the YMCA, thank you for hosting the Insight to Health Fitness Challenge and for the, the, the value that you and the YMCA organization bring to our community. Thank you so much. I'm going to close with Wayne. Wayne's going to surprise you and uh, our listeners, our viewers, with some wonderful music that you're going to be part of. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, now make sure the cameras can get them and me at the same time. There we go. <laughs> All right, producer. I am just, I'm just, traveler, traveler, cowboy, I'm coming to your town. Coming to your town. I am just, I am just, dreadlock, dreadlock. I'm just a cowboy coming to your town. Every time I see you, you make my heart go wild. Every time you kiss me, you make me want to smile. 
Every time you squeeze me, I'll do anything for you that you say to me, cause I wanna be your cowboy tonight. I'm just, I'm just, dread luck, dread luck. cowboy, well I'm coming to your town. I'm just a cowboy coming to your town. Now, this is what I say to my doctor. No woman, no crime. No woman, no crime. No woman, no crime. Come on now. No woman, no crime. I remember when we used to sit in a government yard in Trenchtown, holding all those crazy, crazy hypocrites who mingle with the good people we know. Good friends we've met, good friends we have lost. Check out our new website at insightnews.com. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Great, great. Okay. <laughs> applause, applause. <laughs> the crowd let's, goes wild. Let's get the next crew in. Thank you. I'm Al McFarland. Welcome back to Conversations with Al McFarland. Glad to continue this conversation on health in our community. Uh, the last conversation we had Dr. Winbush and Kyrie Davis from the Y talk about institutional structures to support the health and well-being of our community. But my guests here at this table are practitioners guiding people in our community towards robust, fulfilling uh, activity-directed lives that will support our health as individuals and we think our health as a community. I raise the question, what if North Minneapolis could see itself as a blue zone? What if? And how do we start that journey of 10,000 miles with a single step? Well, one of the crews that's making that happen now are my colleagues, the leaders of the Insight to Health Fitness Challenge, which we are conducting right now in North Minneapolis at the Cora McCorvey YMCA. Uh, the company is Noor Elite Fitness. The leaders are Shea Sandifer and Val Florentine. Uh, Val is a certified Zumba, Zumba instructor, and Shea is a figure body builder. And they lead a phenomenal and awesome class four days a week, I think, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with all together up at the YMCA. Plus they're doing a gazillion more classes in North Minneapolis. Also at the table, a partner in this enterprise is Femi Akinagbe. His company is called Body Dharma Healing Arts and he teaches yoga and meditation. So I wanna talk about all those things and how we've come together to bring an opportunity to change the narrative in our community about health and wellness. First of all, uh, Shay and Val, thank you for doing what you do. And I'm so impressed with you and your company and your spirit uh, at Noor Elite. What's the basis, the, the background? How did you create the Noor Elite model? Well, when we came together, um, the model, we came together. Um, as mothers and as life coaches, um, our life paths came together and we found that we had the same passion um, that 
that was part of our lives. We went through similar situations um, mm -hmm. that have guided our lives to where we are today. Um, We're both um, educated women who've worked in um, corporate America and at some point in our lives um, and our life path, um, we pulled back and realized that that was not, for me personally, that was not where I wanted to be. And we've gone through divorces and, and such. We're both um, mothers mm -hmm. and um, as we went as we went through our divorces, me for one, I decided to completely um, quit corporate America. And as I was listening, I see that you're, you know, I was listening to your last segment, and you're so passionate, and everybody at the table so passionate about North Minneapolis and making it a blue zone and working within our community. And I live, I play, I eat within my community. Um, I, I ended up being in North Minneapolis um, when I got married and I often wondered why I was there and realized after years why I was there. It came um, and we're here, mm -hmm. right? And so what led me to fitness was the simple fact that I was listening to the radio and listening to the disparities of um, health and wellness in North Minneapolis and the numbers, the data was astounding. Um, and it really hit me. And I said, I need to do something different. And so on my personal journey, I went and got certified for um, Zumba. And within a month, I knew where I wanted to be. I knew exactly where I wanted to be. And I've not moved from there since because I've, you know, from my personal story, you've been impacting lives. But when Shay and I came together, we started working with um, um, uh, <laughs> Black Women's Health Imperative. Black Women's yes, Health Imperative. We and on a conference. Yes, we and, were we and, were approached by Pillsbury mm -hmm. uh, to be lifestyle coaches, and they certified us. And what lifestyle coaching is within North Minneapolis is just wonderful. Um, working with 150 women so far that who are pre-diabetic pre and overweight. And overweight. And we meet with them every week. We've coached them for a year long. And we've built community, we've broke down walls and so on and so forth. So when Shan and I came together, we met and at a critical stage. At it a critical stage, stage in our life. I think in both of our lives and in the community. There's been a lot of change over the last three, four years in the north side. Um, they're really trying to make it a blue zone, like you're saying. Um, Al, and just uh, bringing the awareness of the disparities, like she said. Um, right now, black women are the most uh, educated in the United States, but we're also the most overweight, obese. So combine those two, you're getting a lot of people that can't work, um, and then it's becoming generational. And you it's know? impacting the household. It's impacting the whole house. The kids now are overweight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so same thing as Val. I've lived on the north side for years, left, went through a divorce, came back, and that's where my heart is. And so I found it through fitness. Um, that was my journey um, to get, um, instead of going into a dark, deep depression for years, I came out lifting weights with a bang. And I said, not only am I gonna lift weights, I'm gonna change life, so I'm gonna be a figure bodybuilder, I'm gonna compete, and I'm gonna show women of color that we also can get on stage and take control and back of our lives that, you know, things have happened. You don't have to stay depressed, you don't have to live in this bubble just because these things have happened to you. On top of it, I became a manager of a farmer's market on the north side, so I run the Camden Farmer's Market. And that's really passionate to me because people don't understand 80% is diet. So you can exercise all day, all night long, but if you go back to eating cheeseburgers, you're not going to see a change. So we have to get our mind and the way we eat and realize our body needs fuel and good fuel. So you need to start where it all started years ago with our ancestors, growing vegetables and bringing that into the home and showing how to cook those so that, you know, your kids like them. My kids eat vegetables all the time. Sometimes they don't even know they eat vegetables, but they're eating them. And so when we combine those worlds and they, you combine, uh, you know, Val and our styles are totally different, but it works. Mm -hmm. It's, it totally works. And, uh, because uh, we have one, we have mm -hmm. one goal. Yeah. We have, we have one, one goal. goal and it's to work within the community and it's to make it culturally appealing, mm -hmm. um, and inviting and, 
always building a community around all of the work that we do. So we know the women um, and the people that we work with, not only as fitness instructors, but also as friends. Mm -hmm. So we, we, it's very important in our culture to build community. And so that is, that's... Let me say, you say community, and I, I really believe that, but what I'm learning about you is you're building a movement. It uh, is a movement. It, people it's a movement are regarding that, mm -hmm. Val and Shay as a force to be reckoned with, <laughs> and that you are all over the place in the positive and right sense of that phrase. You're providing service, leadership, direction, instruction to a lot of people all day, all week long, and <laughs> they're wondering how you have the energy, energy to do it, but you are prevailing and persisting. I think it's because it's not work for us, mm -hmm. it's our passion. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you have your passion, it just flows, and it just comes naturally. Um, we both love helping people. We love seeing people excited. We love seeing people sweat. We love the questions. We love when we walk in the room, people are like, I'm so sore from three days ago. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's get in it. You got five minutes to warm up. Let's go. Let's move. Right. Um, and and you know, also, we're ahead. also therapy. Um, it's therapy what I've for been, us, yeah. what is, it's not only therapy for <laughs> us, but we know that we are therapy and we are medicine. Mm -hmm. There's so many of, I call them my divas, who come to me after and they're like, hey, you know, I needed this class today. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe that because I was in your shoes and I needed that class mm -hmm. to get through. I needed to re-energize me. I mm -hmm. needed it to get me out of this depressing state. So I understand that. So we are not only, we're, we're like, I mean, they're family. Just, we're they're family. family. And it's so, and mm -hmm. we're so passionate about the work that we do that it really literally comes naturally. Our styles are different, but we mesh. And mm -hmm. because we have that one goal, and that one goal is our community and getting them healthy and getting women excited about there's and nothing men, more and, and men. men you know and they're men. coming little by little yeah, they are um, they're coming to us yeah, the, yeah they're coming little by you, little so let me tell the story you know when batala uh, brought you all to insight news to say these guys should be our partners for the insight to health mm -hmm. fitness challenge my first response was great i kind of knew about you i've mm -hmm. heard about you but my perception was uh, ladies doing Zumba, you know, <laughs> and even that was not right because guys can do Zumba too. And I don't do Zumba. So right. Val does Zumba. Okay, so that, that's, that's what's kind of out there. I do yeah. Zumba. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So, so uh, and so, but when I started the class with you, uh, she asked me one day, how was the class, Dad? You know, how, how was it? And I said, look, this was the best fitness class I've ever had in my life. And that's the truth, you know, because you guys yeah. put so much into it and you inspire, you encourage, and the feeling was really, really a wonderful feeling. So I'm hopeful and I know that uh, my job is to reach out to the brothers that I hang out with and say, look, we got to get together. We got yes. to do this for ourselves, our families, and for our community. And I think you guys are the right team. Well, one of the parts of that team is my brother Femi Akinogbi. I met him, I think I read about him online and he was inviting brothers to come and learn about yoga and meditation. So I said, yeah, I'll check this out. And I went and I was so impressed that I invited him to join us in this enterprise. Femi, meditation and yoga, how have you come to those? And talk about your background. How did you come to where you are now? You've got a great story. Yeah, um, so it's, it's really quite a blessing to sit here and listen to these two talk because listening to both Val and Shay, it reminds me about how much, uh, how much growth, how much healing comes from challenge and suffering, right? So they experience, talking about your own experiences and things you've been through and how we often have a decision to make when we do have challenges, mm -hmm. and we, whether or not we become embittered and, and worse for it or if we use it in some way, shape or form to grow. And uh, you know, it sounds like that's what you all have done. I feel like just healers in general, like that's the decision that they consistently make. So we try to, in some way, shape, or form, grow from it. So, you know, we, it, my own journey it bears witness to the same. Um, I mentioned to you before that my very first memory in life was uh, hearing my father beating my mom, and how challenging that was, and like all the different uh, scary things growing up in a household where there just was a lot of instability. And because there was so much instability in my household, uh, one of the things that I really sought was ways to find, ways to understand the world uh, such that I could have 
peace in my mind, peace in my heart, and, uh, and, and gain some insight into how to not have such a chaotic internal world and external world. And, uh, you know, that led me to a lot of the journey, uh, just exploring different religions, you know. So I grew up in a church and uh, very, very devoted for much of my life. And, you know, still Christianity remains my mother tongue. Uh, but in my more recent years, I say for the last like 14 years or so, I've been studying and practicing more Buddhist meditation as well because uh, I find that that has been helping to, um, meditation helps to, to speak to and soothe the heart in, in a different way for me. Um, and additionally, there's just a ton of research that supports the efficacy of meditation and uh, calming and focusing the mind. And with my other professional and scholastic endeavors, I find like that meditation that really helps to couple that. And uh, sitting and meditating, amazing, it's great. And uh, you know, I've been an athlete my whole life, and I needed a way to help combine both what we do with the mind with the body as well. So yoga just seemed like a natural fit to, uh, to moving into uh, opening up the physical body so that I might be able to open up the mind as well. Yoga, meditation, you're also a martial artist, right? I am. I'm a black belt in the Ten Shen Pai system of Shaolin Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, and no, I just picked the martial art with the longest name on it. Yes. Some people like karate. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, let me get the Ten Shen Pai, da, 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 da. And, and you're also a medical student. I am, that too. <laughs> I'm a third year medical student at the University uh, of Minnesota, UM. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's, um, for me, like that's the and combination. So, and so when I was in your yoga class last Thursday, as you were describing the techniques you were showing us, teaching us, um, I said, he's actually in a classroom and he's rehearsing. That was the impression I had. He was describing what this muscle does and what that does and why this does this as he was putting us yeah. through poses. So he has I'm sitting a, there. He has a testimony. So, I, I yeah. so I'm, I'm doing that, but I said, this is not just this. Yeah, yeah. I think this yeah. cat is rehearsing yeah. Absolutely. and remembering. That's, so that's, that's the feeling I had. Honestly, sometimes when I have a, like an exam coming up or uh, and I'm teaching a class leading up to that, then that'll help to inform the class that I'm teaching, in addition to some of the other things that I like to add into the classroom, socially, politically, internally. I like to weave in what we see in society and also integrate that with what's going on in the body. Mm -hmm. So like, how does stress manifest in the body? You know, how does trauma manifest in the body? How does depression and sadness manifest in the body? Well, a lot of times when people feel these feelings, they close up along the front line of their body, they crump, they crump down like that. So if we engage the front line of the body with heart openers, we stretch out the pectoralis muscles, we bring the rhomboids closer together, and like it, it helps to, again, integrate someone I'm learning in, in medical school, but also just the practicalities of how to live in these bodies in ways that create less suffering and, and, and live more fuller lives. I feel that you're on a mission just like uh, Val and Shay are. Uh, the mission in part, one part of it that I've seen so far, is your commitment to introducing the knowledge you have, integrating uh, both your academic and your experiential uh, 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 activity into a curriculum that our community can mm -hmm. both uh, have access to, ingest, and grow from. Am I saying that the right way? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, growing up, um, my family was very poor. We didn't have health care. We didn't have access to a lot of things that um, much of America has. And um, you're Nigerian. Yeah, and we're, you're Yoruba. You're exactly. And Yoruba. you and I connected because I'm a Yoruba. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, okay. I was teaching me some Yoruba the other day. So, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, finding that they're just um, it, it, we all want to be well. We all want access to health, but for different reasons, we don't all get that. So uh, making, making the classes, making what we do accessible so that our people can have access to it because a lot, much of the way yoga meditation has been brought forth uh, in, in our Western society uh, and popularized has been through one specific paradigm. And you know, God bless my, my white sisters and brothers and how they pr uh, practice yoga and meditation, but they're not the only individuals who have access to these practices. Yoga meditation, uh, particularly Buddhist meditation and yoga, uh, come from the East uh, and were invented uh, by people of color. And so, uh, you know, bringing it here to the West, I think that 
the dissociation that many of our people feel from it has been because it's come through one specific lens. And one thing that uh, I like to do with my work is help people understand that we are embodied people, right? That's just how we move through life. And so the, the idea of uh, recognizing that innate embodiment and bringing some mindful awareness to that to serve in our healing process, that's something that, that, that comes very natural to us. And I'm always surprised at how natural it is when people who, who tell me they can't do this yoga, they can't do this yoga, how when you just get them to sit down, let me get 10 minutes with you, 10 minutes, how easy the practice of being embodied comes to them. What is mindfulness? Who wants to jump on that? What is mindfulness? I'll tell you, I just taught an um, uh, introduction to uh, mindfulness class uh, a couple weeks ago. And I have no idea what my. <laughs> 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 I was like, what yeah. is yeah. Having is. taught it, right? Yeah. 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 I think it's, it's, a, it's a phrase, it's a word that gets thrown around a lot in our society right now. Mm -hmm. And it actually can be very, uh, very amorphous. People I have no idea what my. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I believe that we all have direct experience of mindful awareness. We all know what it is to be completely present in a moment, whether or not mm -hmm. it's with a loved one that we care about, a child, whether or not we're looking don't at a- Don't practice it. It's yes. true. We don't, don't practice, we don't practice it. it. We don't practice it. And so yeah. the meditation and, and, and these in yoga, these practices are, are exactly what you're saying. They're just an opportunity to consciously direct our attention at cultivating the muscle of mindfulness so that we can have, uh, so, so that instead of just having like random moments of mindfulness where we are totally overwhelmed with a certain thing, feeling, uh, uh, thought, then we can develop the muscle of mindfulness so that we can engage in a meaningful way uh, more mindfully in the world around us. Let me uh, do this. I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you for the partnerships that we are exploring and creating among each other among our businesses and companies to help focus on uh, the idea that our communities can be healing, self-healing, mm -hmm. that we can direct uh, our, our health, that our health is our wealth, that our health is our business. Yes, it's our business, it and we've got to pay attention to our business. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, am celebrating the fact that we have decided to work together to bring this value to our community and, and to we demonstrate. Thank you. Yeah. We yeah. thank you for this, this opportunity, opportunity. Thank working you. with you guys, working with the Y, working with introducing us to Femi. So. Great, great. And we'll put up uh, contact information so people know how to reach you individually okay. because you all are connecting with people all the time. Mm -hmm. And I want to invite everybody to also stay attuned to, to Insight News about the upcoming mm -hmm. classes of the Insight to Health Fitness Challenge. I'm Alan McFarland. We'll see you next time. Check out our new website at insightnews.com. I'm just a cowboy and we're coming to your town. Every time I see you, you make my heart go wild. Every time you kiss me, you make me want to smile. It's all right, it's okay. I want to be the special lover. Wanna be your cowboy, please?